Hello and welcome everyone. Brandon Hensley here, Director of Athletic Video Operations here at University of the Cumberlands. Today we're going to be talking with a handful of University of the Cumberlands coaches as well as Tommy Chasnoff, the Sports Information Director here at University of Cumberlands as well as Assistant Athletic Director. We are joined alongside with Matt Reimer, University of the Cumberlands Head Football Coach, Bailey Dillinger, University of the Cumberland Softball Coach, and Chris Lefevre, University of Cumberland's Men's Soccer Coach. And I guess for all of us, we're just going to chime in and, and give kind of our challenges and thoughts. Obviously, a, a different time with COVID-19 happening. And every one of us has had to deal with something different. You know, from a sports information aspect, it's really going to hit us hard. From coaching aspects, you guys are, are dealing with it and trying to touch on some different topics. And, you know, this is one of these things where we're all just going to chip in and talk. But first and foremost, the effect that this pandemic has had on this university, this athletes. Uh, you know, Tommy, we'll, we'll start with you. You know, what, what, what are some things that uh, we're dealing with here? Well, I think it's unprecedented times. We've heard that numerous from, from numerous people, for coaches, for administration. This is all a learning curve for all of us. It's something that none of us have ever done. And so when it first hit, you know, the athletics, we got put on a two-week suspension from the NAIA of games being pushed back for two weeks, championships, winter championships being canceled, and, and we went from that to being home, and with a week later, now spring sports are completely canceled, and no one got to really wrap up their spring season. Um, so, for the athletes, from our perspective, it was, it, we felt bad for the athletes. We, we always want to be there. We want to promote the athletes the best we can. But now it's a new challenge. It continued over the summer, and now we're in the fall. We're, we're, we were fortunate to welcome students back to campus, and we're excited to see what's coming. I think the schedules that the Mid-South Conference had produced had put the student athletes in the best position to have a complete season this year. And obviously the challenge of keeping a mask on the whole time while talking is, is up there too. But uh, Coach Lefevre, just uh, talk to me about some of the things that uh, you've experienced uh, from this with your team. Well, quite frankly, um, I, I guess the way that I've been viewing it um, this entire time is, is, is really actually been quite a big positive for us. Um, we normally, in, in regards to the fall, just now, you know, we normally come in and we have about two weeks, maybe a third, depending on how we schedule, to prepare and we're immediately playing games. And to now have, you know, essentially seven weeks before you play a game, it's more of a model like the rest of the world in our sport. So our players, even us, it was a pretty easy adjustment uh, and really actually something to be really excited about because you know, you can integrate the new players so much better you can you know prepare your game model so much better and get your players you know healthy and physically fit um, so much better so really it's it's a it, it's actually been a, a pretty big positive for us you know in regards to the spring of course um, you know we, we did not suffer the way that the actual spring sports suffered um, really the only negative for us in the spring was I, I had a couple of recruiting trips that got canceled but it was really just continue on as normal for us you know and so um, you know we obviously felt bad for for the rest of the spring sports but we didn't suffer the same way you know so um, it, it, it's an interesting experience for me because I, I really haven't looked at this as a challenge or even something that's been a negative at all. Sure and Bailey we'll, we'll roll around on to you a, a coach that had their team not be able to finish a season what was that experience like um, you, you kind of got the feeling it could happen but once it did happen and there was no no finish what was that like for you? Well my uh, opinion of this is 180 degrees different than, than Coach Lefevre. And I think the hardest part for us was, especially where we're at with our program right now. So year three, um, for me, for you know my staff, for my players, we were looking at you know a sophomore class who came in 
as freshmen and did things that had really never been done here. And so we brought in another talented class. And, you know, for me, I think the biggest thing that I'm looking at now that we're in August and it is what it is, we can't fix it. We can't go back and change it. But I think the one thing that we, that I think we'll, we'll see the greatest impact is they lost games, they lost experience. And there's no way to fix lost experience or, you know, time missed because at the end of the day, there was 35 games that with youth, with inexperience, the only way they're getting better is to play. And so I think that was, you know, the hardest part for us. And then just, you know, the heartbreak and, and the emotions that I as a coach felt that, good grief, we never thought we would feel those emotions. But, you know, March, April, May, they were miserable. They were dark months for me just because since I can remember, I mean, March, April, and May has been softball season, and it wasn't. And so, you know, you, you look and you send your kids home, and we just got back from a, a long Florida trip, but we learned a lot. You know, I mean, we had had some adversity going into the preseason. We had had some, some arms that decided not to return. We had had some injuries, some all kinds of things. And so when we got there and we were going through it, I just felt like the only way we were going to get to the other side of that was to keep playing. So now as we're preparing again and the kids are back on campus, I mean, we're ecstatic. We're excited. There's a new, um, like a rejuvenation almost, that it's just nice. It's refreshing to have them back, but there's a lot of work. There's a lot of experience to make up for. And like I said, I don't know how you make up for experience per se without the opportunity to compete. And I just need my kids to keep competing. I need those young kids to be on the field in games that matter and, and just continue to learn and find ways to compete and find ways to win. And the only way we can do that is to keep playing. So that was the biggest impact for us was just the heartbreak and the abrupt, sudden stop of everything being over. It was all going and then pff, it's gone. Uh, so that was probably the hardest part for us, for me, you know, just losing my kids. I mean. That's kind of what makes the clock tick for us as coaches, as our kids. And when you just abruptly lose them, there are so many open-ended things. And I've even found myself in the last couple of weeks having them back. We keep talking about last year. Well, we can't live there. We can't fix it. We can't go back and do anything different. But there was just no ending to that story. There was no ending to that season for them. And so I think that's the hardest part with my kids that we're working on and working through right now is that we've got to move into this year. Last year, as bad as it was or as unfortunate as, as it was, there's nothing we can do to fix it now. We've got to keep moving forward. We've got to keep plugging away at the things that we want to uh, accomplish with our program and move in a different direction than backwards. So that's kind of us. That's where we're at right now. And like Coach Chris Lefebvre, uh, Coach Reimer, you, you're another coach that you're getting a little extra preparation time. But kind of the spin I want to ask you about is when you're dealing with so many kids, when, you're, when you have to answer so many questions from parents, uh, you, you lose a, a spring practice season and you lose a fall season, but you're going to be participating in the spring. So you have almost a calendar year between competition but you have so many kids to, to account for and, and you have a lot of different challenges just kind of talk about those yeah there's um, a lot of directions you could go there's a lot of challenges it's um, just been a, a sort of an in-game adjustment you know like a halftime you come in and you look back and you realize what what mistakes we made or what what we did well and you try to try to finish the game well so it's you know, looking back for us, you know, we, we got a great recruiting class. We were able to do that. That was important to finish recruiting. We got our class signed by National Signing Day and have a really good class. You know, we, we were able to work out until spring break, you know, when that's when it all shut down. So we got some workouts in and then, you know, we had to go home. And so we missed really, you know, we missed 15 practices and, you know, workouts through March and April. You know, we go home in May anyway. So. It wasn't a huge, huge loss for us in terms of just time spent with our team. We missed some spring practice and missed some workouts, but it was, uh, you know, it was devastating to the to the other sports, baseball and softball, the spring sports. That was where my heart really ached for them, and even high school kids, you know, that didn't get to finish their seasons and graduate and proms and just, you know, this our freshman class, the guys that have came in, they've went through things that none of us have ever even thought about going through. So the, you know, the. You know, those, they're special, you know, to me. They're, you know, they're, they're going to have life experience that none of us have had. So um, that's unique just, you know, hearing those guys' perspective, too, as they come in, the freshmen. But so now for us where we're at, just moving forward, you know, we're, 
we're gaining everything that we lost, you know, so we're able to pick up with workouts. We're treating August like January, so, you know, we're doing off-season workouts and training and conditioning. All of our young guys are going to be mature and stronger and in our weight program for several months, and then later on in the fall we'll practice and we'll get those spring practices that we missed in the fall, and then we'll, we'll play football in the spring. So I think the challenges are still to be determined for us, you know, in terms of just playing two seasons in one year and, you know, perhaps next year, you know, playing in the spring and fall, I think uh, is going to be unique in and of itself. But we're excited. I mean, it's, you know, our guys are back working hard and, you know, the message is clear. You know, we have goals just like we would if we were coming in in the fall. So it's communication, you know, that was a, a, a huge thing. You like to see your guys, talk to them face to face, and you couldn't do that. And so a lot of, uh, you know, Zoom situations, texting, and just, you know, trying to encourage them to stay steady and understand that, you know, we're going to get through this and, you know, we're all going to be stronger on the other side of it. It's just, it takes time and um, all of us are in it together. So it's, it definitely has been unique, but we're excited to be back and where we're at and looking forward to the future and, you know, being able to compete in the spring. So we're, it's all well, you know, it's, it's good. We're just uh, trying not to, as, as, as Coach Dillinger said, you know, you can't, live in the past but you can learn from it you know and we've certainly done that and um you know we're just trying to move forward kind of to go on that the mental health of your student athletes talking about how you, you keep them positive how you keep them feeling secure and safe what kind of roles have you guys had to take in doing that and how has not just the x's and o's of being a coach but also being that mentor being that leader how has that changed for you or, or how have you grown in that i can go there you know for us it's you know we have a lot of a lot of athletes so that was you know we received a lot of protocols and guidelines from the university from public health officials and with social distances and masks and you know proper hygiene and all those things hydration you know we we had to discuss all that look into it and develop you know, programs to, to handle all that. And so for us, you know, football is naturally separated by position. You know, you have different position groups. And for us, fortunately, when it broke down, we were able to, you know, keep the amount of guys that we needed to have in the weight room. It all fit, it all worked. And so we have a great rotation in the weight room on the field and we're still doing, you know, all of our weight training, conditioning, agilities and plyometrics and individual position work. So trying to keep them, you know, separated and social distance, you know, and, and wearing their mask and doing all the protocols. But to, to them, it's, they're very sensitive to it. I think they want to stay healthy. They want to stay in the game and they want to be able to continue to, to get education and to, to compete. And so it's not uh, like we have to talk them into that every day. You know, they're, they understand the importance of it and they're doing a great job. Proud of them for that. And again, hats off to them. I can't imagine going through all of the things that we're asking them to do, the challenges they faced, and, and I just think the kids are handling it really well. So um, I think all of it, too, is to be determined. We think we're doing a great job, and so far we're, you know, we're, we're healthy and getting stronger and better, we feel like. But, you know, again, this will be an experience we all look back and we'll, we'll see things we handled, you know, perfect, and there'll be things we, you know, realize probably we could have done a little bit different. So I'm sure these guys have a lot to say to that, too. Well, just speaking from a, a female athlete perspective, I think emotionally uh, it's been a little different for us. So I've seen both sides of this. And on one side, my returners who abruptly went home for five months unexpected, it was like you could feel them when they got back on campus and we had our first team meeting and they you know, came in the locker room, obviously through temp checks and our, our masks and all that. There was an exhale. It was like all of a sudden, all was right in their world again. Um, and it's really weird. And I know that sounds kind of bizarre, but we, you could literally feel a lot of their anxiety over all of this and you know the sensitivity that there is to it. You could feel a lot of that kind of disappear for a moment or you know a little bit go away in a sense. And that was, it was rejuvenating for me. It was one of those things you're like, ah. Oh, Okay, because I did the same thing. You exhale. All of a sudden, your people are back, your group's back, your tribe's back, and you're like, this is good. We're good. There's so many weird things going on, so many things that make us a little, make us uncomfortable. The masks, the temp checks, the, you know, questions and all of that. But at the end of the day, what I learned the, the quickest when the kids got back 
was that this is their home and this is their comfort zones. And how cool is that, right? So for me as a coach, that's cool to see because they went home with their families. And I'm not saying none of my kids, very few of my kids, you know, have tremendous struggles at home. I mean, they are all blessed. We are a blessed program. But when they got back here, it was almost like it was a breath of fresh air. Um, you can still see a little sense of anxiety and a little bit of fear because it was taken so fast that you, they're kind of like, coach, we don't want to go back home. We don't want to do this. We, you know, we want to stay here. We want to be here. This is our, you know. And so you feel a little bit of that anxiety, but I think overall the returners are just, you know, overjoyed at the idea of just being back on campus and being back, you know, around the team, being back around their sport. They love it here. They love Williamsburg and they love Cumberlands. Um, and I think that's something that I'm really prideful of is that's what we're trying to build our program to be. And, you know, I mean, we're year three, getting ready to go into year four. And so to see that now on the completely opposite side of the spectrum, one of my challenges so far, and, you know, this is year nine for me in coaching for as a head coach, but one thing that I've seen more and heard more about this year than ever before is kids being homesick. I have three freshmen that came to me in the first week that they want to go back home. Now, there's a ton of factors that can play into that, right? But you've got to remember, and it's like Coach Reimer said a minute ago, this freshman class is special, and they will always be different than the rest because they lost their senior seasons, they lost graduation day, they lost, you know, we can talk about but it's different for them. And I think another factor that plays into that is our welcome weeks and things were very different this year. Now we had to make them different. We have to make, you know, we have to follow the guidelines and the CDC recommendations and things like that. But the struggle, if we're gonna pick out a struggle, it's that some of these freshmen who maybe have been a little sheltered and who have maybe, you know, stayed a little close to home or they come from that small town, I need them to get out. I need them to make new friends and get out of their comfort zones and quit sitting in their ro their dorm rooms looking at the walls saying I miss my mom or I miss my dad or my boyfriend or whatever it is that they're missing my dog and I need them to be out and be more social because right now I feel like there's so much time on their hands with the virtual learning and the in class you know how how all those things are spreading it's beneficial it's what we have to do right now but the struggle right now for me as a head coach and kind of sympathizing and empathizing with my kids is that this is a this is a unique struggle that in all my years and I, I know I'm not a seasoned as some but in many years I've never had so much of it and I think it's a, that testament of the quarantine that that you know suffocating and being in this small space or not being able to go out and spread my wings and the reality is is when you go off to college, it's all about spreading your wings. It's all about getting out there, making new people, making new friends, meeting new people and that kind of thing. So that's been a struggle. But like I said, the other side of it and just the relief and the, you know, the breath of fresh air that, you know, my returners have felt, it's been on both sides. And I think overall the excitement outweighs, you know, some of that other anxiety about being a little bit homesick and dealing with some of that a little bit differently than we have in the past. But those have kind of been our unique experiences so far. Um, and we could learn some more things as we go, so. Yeah, I think, uh, so in regards to, to us, um, you know, really for me, in regards to the mental health of my team and, and how we kind of handled that is, it was a decision pretty early on, like, you know, everything gets shut down, people are sent home, people are quarantined, you got countries responding in all sorts of different ways. And uh, for me, it was like just a just a personal decision of, of saying, you know, I'm going to make sure that in everything I'm doing, all the decisions I'm making, whatever it is I'm communicating, that I'm trying to teach my guys that fear and anxiety is not going to be a part of that decision process or how I'm going to make life choices, how I'm going to view things, my world view, if you want to put it that way. Like fear and anxiety just are not a part of that. And, um, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the messages we send to them and how what we've tried to establish within our, within our culture. You know, we, we have we, hope would be one of those core values. It's all about, you know, hope is all about just being positive, right? So being a visionary. Being a visionary means you're, you're, you're effective. It means that you know your purpose, you know your why. And so, you know, if we're going to be a visionary and we're, we're going to, you know, know our purpose and know our why, then we're, we're not going to allow even just 
big adversities, little adversities to get in the way of where we want to go. And so if we're going to make choices to then, you know, constantly strive to get to where we're going to want to go, anxiety and fear can't be a part of it, you know. And so it, how we've viewed, you know, COVID and, and all of the different, you know, stipulations that have been put on, on us and the players, and I have players from all over the world, so you had different guys experiencing different things. That's kind of what channeled me to just try to stay really concentrated on, you know, just trying to, to lead from the front in that way for these guys so that, you know, quite frankly, we can just, you know, this is, this is sickness and illness is a part of this world. And, you know, we, we need to make, uh, we, we need to live with it and be smart, of course, and be intelligent and abide by rules that have been laid down to us, of course. But fear and anxiety don't need to be a part of that. You know, and so that's kind of where we've come from. That's how we've tried to pour into our players and seeing how they've come back and how what their own personal responses are to everything. I think we've got a, a pretty special group of guys that have that have maybe, you know, understood that view and how important it is for themselves, you know, and again, all of them experienced it different ways, Spain, Iceland. <laughs> Paraguay all very very different situations but you know living your life through hope and being positive and and whatnot is 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 adaptable it's it's that's that's not special or unique that's all circumstances you know so that's kind of how we've tried to try to lead our group well and I think that there's something else and we're talking about when Brendan asked about the mental health aspect of it and it's also the student athletes have gone through a lot, but us as administrators, us as coaches have gone through some of our own struggles with having to adapt, having to adjust to do meetings, having to work from home, having to do a lot of things that we have never had to do or never had to face before. And so, you know, with student athletes are struggling, realize the coaches have been in those positions. We've all gone through it this summer too. I mean, I know with my staff, we had more Zoom meetings than, than we've ever had before. We were not in the office together. So we had to come up with new creative ways to work together. To how, do, how do we complete projects? How are we going to adapt to the changes of what's coming this year? All of that stuff is still important. And you know, it's not just the student athletes that have gone through the struggles, the anxieties, the um, uneasiness of not knowing what's coming. I think we've all done it as coaches, as administrators, as um, personnel at the university of trying to do what's best for our constituents, our students, our colleagues, you know, and we've all reached out to each other. We've all called each other. We've all made sure each other was doing okay throughout the summer. And I think that helped, helped everyone get through it with the uncertainty of what was coming or when were we going to be able to get back to campus. Tommy, I'm going to stay with you. Um, here at the University of the Cumberlands, we have 30-something sports. It seems like we're adding uh, new sports all the time. And typically, that spans through August to, to May. But now we're going to have this in a much shorter span. Just kind of paint the picture on what, when sports start back, what, what it could look like and what it will look like here at Cumberlands. Well, I, th I think the fall is going to be a little strange because we don't have that many home events. We're very fortunate. We're going to start competing in October, so we, I think we're all looking forward to that. Um, but when you hit the spring, it's going to be seven days a week. I can't imagine, I mean, we're going to be very fortunate if we do get a day off, but, you know, it's also exciting. I think our staff is we're excited for the student athletes. We want to be out there. We want to be covering them. If it means we have to cover four games in a day, then we do it. Like, I, I don't think we're looking at this as a challenge. I think we're embracing it. We're looking at it as an opportunity to try something new. We're thankful that hopefully this will only be a one-time deal where we have to worry about things. Um, but I think from the student athletes, we want to be out there. We want to cover them. The fan perspective, Right now, we know we're not going to have a lot outside fans in the fall. Um, so I think it's going to create a different atmosphere at some of those games. We hope 
we're hoping and we'll see how the guidelines have changed and come January and come the springtime. But I think just being out there and being able to cover them and, you know, we're very fortunate with the staff that we have that we're going to try to do our best to stream every game and try to make it available. And I think we have to look forward and embrace the challenge, not look at it as a negative. And here at Cumberland, we are very fortunate that we have so many athletic facilities that uh, teams can play on. So that kind of puts a challenge as you could have a handful of events happening at the same time. But there's also some facilities that, that share uh, soccer and lacrosse. Coach Lefevre, you guys share facilities. And I know that's something that, that you, as well as Coach Hamilton and Coach uh, Bucus, Coach Campbell, all talked about uh, uh, sharing the facilities. And it's, it's going to be even a bigger challenge than what it was but you know how what has that process been like is it is it something where you guys have, have came together is it kind of you, do you have a set schedule down for practice times and game times yeah well um i mean my whole career i've worked at six institutions and i've had to share at all of them except one so sharing a facility wasn't something new to me um and I think what really, really was beneficial in regards to our specific situation here was that uh, what, with all of the changes to the playing seasons, there was also changes to how we are handling um, you know, the academic semesters. So going to buy terms has really benefited this situation of sharing facilities because you know, the players are, are, are taking less classes per eight weeks, which means there's more opportunities to practice in the morning, not at like 5.30 in the morning, you know, at better times in the morning. We've been very fortunate with our team that we've been able to maneuver that. And so for this year, you know, one team is going in the morning and eliminating problems for three other programs, um, you know, in the early afternoon to late evening times. So like, that's been a huge plus so that 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 change in the buy terms was a big benefit because it would have been a problem for sure if if none of us could start practicing until three o'clock four o'clock that's not setting up the students very well you know to handle their studies to to handle the the demands of the sports um, because they're in classes all day and then they're having to train until 11 o'clock at night it just wouldn't it wouldn't be great but now you have a team going in the morning more than likely a team's gonna be able to get a much earlier afternoon time slot. So it really is it has opened up, you know, opportunities for each of us to 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 handle this um, scenario in a in a pretty pretty easy and smooth way, you know. Um, so that's how we've benefited, you know, and for, for me, we love training in the morning. Our guys love training in the morning, especially this time of year when it's usually really hot in the afternoon. Um, and uh, we, we just get ourselves into a routine and we stick with it. You know, we go for it for the year. All right, let's touch on another subject really quickly. Uh, Coach Reimer, you're a sport that, you know, obviously plays in the fall. You play 10, 11 games and it comes playoff times. Well, now you're going to be playing at non traditional times and with an amended schedule. I think seven games as of right now on the regular season docket. So, talk to me about what that's like, you know, the different times, and then not having as many games. What's, what's the process there? Yeah, well, again, that's all in the future. Right now, you know, it's just, uh, we, it's new. So, but we're you know, playing a conference only schedule is um, uh, encouraging to us just because we know our opponents, we know, you know, the travel situations, we know that those are um, things, you know, places we've been before and used to going. And so that won't be a huge adjustment, you know, and uh, we're not having long trips, say to Florida and, and places like that because our conference has expanded, but it's divisional only now. So that takes a lot of stress off of us, you know, trying to prepare and plan for taking a whole you know, team to, you know, through several states and making several stops. So just the condensed schedule makes a ton of sense. I think all of our coaches in our conference were in much agreement in that. So we're you know, just looking forward to playing those teams, you know, and um, again, we got to, sort of think through all of this, you know, with, with recruiting and, you know, the, the change, you know, we, we normally recruit in the winter and spring, you know, now we're going to be practicing and playing, so that's a huge adjustment, but uh, we're also going to be playing two seasons in one calendar year, so that's uh, unique in and of itself, so we've got to really 
you know, right now we're just trying to pace ourselves, you know, and just take it one day at a time and not, not try to do too much too soon. You know, we've got a peak, you know, two different times in one calendar year, you know, where typically you try to peak, you know, the end of your regular season, getting into the playoffs. And so now we're going to try to be peaking come May, you know, and, and hopefully make a run in the playoffs and then turn around and then peak again in December in the same year. So all of those are unique uh, things to consider. So, but we're excited about it and really looking forward to getting going in that schedule. And I think it was wise to make that move. I think it's been a good uh, decision. You know, as we've seen already in our conference, there's been isolated events where teams have had to shut down for, for a period of time just because of, you know, uh, cases of the COVID and, and quarantines and isolations and those things. So it would be tough for us to be trying to play a game right now with the uh, uncertainty of maybe having to, you know, quarantine a whole position group or something, you know. So it's hopefully by the spring we'll have a whole lot more answers, a whole lot more understanding about mitigation and how to handle situations if a kid were to be sick and uh, or a coach or whatever. So I don't know um, if that answers your question, but it's uh, it's all still, you know, in the future. So we're just we're trying to take each day as it comes. And I think we have a great plan and a lot of energy, a lot of excitement and just looking forward to just each day moving forward. TBD on that one. Also, uh, what, football, I believe, Tommy, we're going to play in the fall and uh, Friday night, right? We're going to play Friday night football. Um, I will give the Mid-South Conference a lot of credit with the way that they have scheduled throughout the spring with this new adjustment. Soccer's conference games are Sunday, Tuesday now for the spring this year. So you're seeing a lot more adjustments, I think, partly to help with facility issues, partly to help with the support staff issues, whether it's athletic training, whether it's sports information, making sure that these student athletes and the team can get the proper coverage with 30 teams going at one time, which is something we've never dealt with before. Uh, a, a team that is eager to get at it, once again, is softball. Coach Dillinger, have you had any type of issue scheduling? Has the COVID-19 kind of put a, a damper on the scheduling as far as places you can go? Are you, do you have you still got the the amount of games you'd like to get? Yes. <laughs> um, I, right now it hasn't because we haven't changed anything about the outlook or you know the to total body of what February to May can look like for us. So right now, I mean, heck, I thought I was doing good when I looked up in April and had a 52 game schedule already done. That had never happened before. So if we're looking for positives, that was one of them. Um, it's affected us this fall um, just for the simple fact that we get five scrimmage dates and I lost three of them last week to the Tennessee JUCO systems because they aren't letting any teams travel out of state to their campuses. Um, you know, so here we go. We're just going to continue to plug away at it. You know, fortunately for us right now, we have 24, 25 healthy athletes that we can easily split into a couple of teams <clears throat> maybe we're going to make a world series out of that and do a two or three game set with you know each other uh there's a couple of local um you know nai institutions that are actually we're in conversations about maybe playing other nai teams this fall uh, they're not in our conference so i'm like i don't have an issue with it i just want my kids to play um you know but as of right now the schedule is easy um where we can go, you know, I mean, everything is okay for us right now, um, you know, in September. So I'm just continuing to plan for that. I'm continuing to, you know, plan to open our season on February 12th in the Sunshine State. Now, if we get to, I'm not sure, but right now that's what we're planning for. You know, I mean, that's where I plan on being. That's what we're preparing for when we're talking to the kids about, you know, how, how serious we need to take our weight training and our conditioning and all those things is we're preparing for February 12th. And until something changes, that's our game plan. And that's where we're heading. That's the, you know, the message and our, our clear vision of where this is going is February 12th. That's where we're trying to get to right now. So, I think for Coach Lefebvre, you had a little bit different challenge with scheduling, considering you have the AAC and the River States who went to a conference-only fall schedule. So trying to find some of your non-conference, because I know you'd like to play a couple home non-conference games this year at the right now you just have the one non-conference or two home non-conference games in january so talk a little bit about that and and the struggle of finding games in the fall yeah i think uh what what 
probably in, in regards to scheduling for the fall, um, the there were so many different conferences doing so many different things. So you have some that are doing a split. You got some that are playing only conference games in the, in the fall, all non-conference in the spring. Um, you have some that are flipped the other way around. Uh, but then you also have institutions that maybe they're able to play this fall, but they're not allowing those teams to do overnights or, you know, maybe not go on trips for too long in the fans, you know, seven hour trips, whatever. So, you know, filling, you know, we probably preferably would have wanted six, uh, seven actual games this fall. That would have been awesome. We have, we, we are playing seven games this fall, but only three of them are, are actually you know, uh, specifically for the the conference schedule. Uh, sorry, non-conference schedule, and then we'll have our not, uh, regular season conference in the, in the spring. So, yeah, uh, everybody wants to play at home. I don't really care where we play. We just want to play. So we'll go. We'll go travel everywhere, um, and that's maybe been. Uh, a, a challenge for us because then you schedule three, four, five games away and you're like, boy, it would be nice to have a home game every once in a while. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, 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 that part has been interesting for sure. I'm just happy that we actually filled our schedule. <laughs> so, you know, whatever way, shape or form it came, we're just happy that we, we got those 16 games and we're good to go. Billy, you brought up experience about missing the experience from the spring. And but we not, we not only did they lose the spring, a lot of people play summer ball with softball, baseball, soccer. You guys play during the sp during the summer. How much does losing your summer t uh, travel or them playing on club teams or travel teams? How much has that impacted their ability when they came back in the fall? Are they in sh as in shape or are they where they normally are at this time? What kind of impact has that had on your team? I've been really impressed in two weeks. Um, I feel like, honestly, I didn't have any kids that just came back, and I was like, golly, they haven't done much. I've had some kids, I'm like, man, i got to put some muscle back on you. Um, you know, but overall, we miss the playing experience. You miss a seven-inning game. Um, but I have been thrilled and extremely um, excited because I haven't had that fall where I'm like, God, oh, they went and sat on the beach all summer. They didn't do nothing. No, I mean, these kids are eager. They're ready to get after it. They're prepared. There's not as much rust, really, honestly, as I was expecting. So I think overall we've missed seven inning games, but those kids went home and worked because I think they knew when the opportunity came back around for them to compete again, they were going to be ready. And overall, I feel like that's kind of, that's where we're at and they're ready to roll. And I'm pleased with that, so. Yeah, I think uh, for, for us, um, yeah, because all over the world, everything was shut down in March. There was only one player on our on our team um, whose country actually opened up and started games over the summer. So he's been pretty fortunate because he's definitely uh, a lot farther along than the rest of them. One of the things we try, you know, to pour into the guys is be a craftsman, be professional you know, take joy in what you're doing. So just make sure we're prepared, be prepared. That's about keeping in shape. So in this situation, all of them as individual athletes worked out, trained. Yeah, in that regard, it was good. In regards to are they actually ready for an intense training environment with pressure and competition and actually giving actions within our game, no, because they haven't done anything they, and they haven't been able to do anything since March. So that's where this whole aspect of the way this calendar year has shaped up has been such a huge benefit because we have the time to get them to where they need to be. And we can do that in their best interest because it's all about keeping them healthy, keeping them fresh, and allowing them to go out there and have a performance that's quality. And so, um, so you know, it, it, it sure it could have been a negative if we had to play within three weeks, but we don't. So, no big deal. We we get to work and we'll take care of them and we'll get them ready.
One thing we like here at University of Cumberland is the uh, camaraderie and the one big team aspect. We all feel like we work well together, coaches, student athletes. I'd like to hear from all you uh, coaches about how the school has handled the whole pandemic with COVID-19, the, the positives, positives that you guys have seen. Yeah, I can, I can start there. You know, it's, um, you know, for me, it's been a, a great challenge personally. And, you know, I've had challenges. Um, you know, I came here as a student. I came here and um, played here, graduated from here, you know, was a assistant coach, now the head coach. And this place has always brought hope to me. It's always brought purpose to me. And, um, you know, it's, this is a special place. Um, it has been and is and will continue to be. And, and I always say it's about people. You know, there's special people here. And I think when times are tough, I think that's when our people, our, our administration, faculty, staff, students, coaches, community really shine the brightest and, and stand together. And we've seen, we've had a lot of challenges recently, you know, and just um, our campus always rises above. I, I think, you know, the, the situations uh, that we've faced with COVID, you know, just, you know, those are, those are tough decisions to make administratively. You know, there's a lot of factors there. There's a lot of variables and just, yeah, I know for me, it starts with prayer. You know, I have prayed diligently for our administrators, for our coaches, for our student athletes, just to be um, hopeful and just to find purpose through all of this. But our administration has constantly just, you know, I felt like made great decisions through all of this. And, um, you know, the, the situations that have, you know, been hard for all of us, we have been able to stay positive. We've been able to stay focused. We've been able to have purpose, you know, just like, just like always here for me. But, you know, so I, I commend, you know, Dr. Cockrum, Dr. Coleman, Coach Craftick, all the administrators um, that have really just, you know, I know been in some challenging meetings and having to make really tough decisions. I think it shows the leadership that we have that, and they really care and they're, they're, they're wise about what they're doing and they make great decisions. And I think the, the culture that we have, you know, it's easy to support them because we know how much they support us. And, you know, it all just, it, it works, um, it works great. And so, but I also want to, you know, just brag on you guys a little bit. Um, you know, our, our social media, you know, the, the aspects of that, just, you know, every week we've had positive messages. We've had things that go, out that people can watch games people can watch highlights people can we celebrate each other's successes even looking back and past seasons and past accomplishments and you know whether it be an all-decade team or just past moments you know it's just that we can reflect on like you guys in our sports information department's done an unbelievable job of just creating that type of energy around you know all of our athletes former athletes you know, i see you know i see people from the past commenting on things and just uh you know, it's just everything has worked great, you know, in, in such a trying time. And I, I commend all, all of our people for just stepping up to the plate and really hitting a home run. And um, I'm proud to be here. You know, I'm thankful for this place. And I always say, you know, it's just it's humbling to be here, you know, every day. And, you know, I appreciate it so much, um, you know, to feel the support, you know, that we've had from administration and, and, and from our, our peers and, and, and fellow coaches. and. Um, you know, I know that I need this place more than it needs me every single day. And I try to tell myself that and really just try to even teach that to our, to our athletes. You know, this is a special place and um, I'm thankful. You know, I think it's been great. So I certainly think our university has handled this um, on a one to 10 and I give it a 10 all day. So it's, I feel safe, I feel, you know, supported and, you know, just excited to be where I'm at. Matt Reimer for the win. What about you guys? Um, yeah, I, I, I can only say positive things about the leadership of this university. Um, when all of the, when the pandemic hit in, in, in the spring, over a course of time, of course, there's a period where um, there's not enough information information for decisions to be made, right? Well. You know, we're all looking around. We're just trying to look for, for, for decisions. And, and the conversation when you look everywhere is always, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You come here and we're like, we know. And there's clarity on what exactly we are going to do. And it all ties into, 
you know, the growth mindset, which is what this whole university has had for a long time, clearly, because what we have been able to do during this time where um, there's a lot of universities and institutions that are struggling, it, it says a lot about the leadership and the clarity, uh, the integrity that goes along with it, um, the purpose they have, but then also that it's it's not an overnight success. This stuff's been building for so long that you know they they can adjust and make clear decisions and lead uh, the rest of us. You know, so once the university was able to have information from you know the people they needed it from, government and local health officials and whatnot. I mean, their their plan was extremely detailed, uh, diligently thought out, and uh, it has been very well executed because it's been communicated from us, you know, from them down to us, down to students, down to RAs, you know, it, it just across the board. So can't say enough about student services, housing, um, you know, our staff as athletics, and then clearly, you know, the administration of the university, Dr. Cockrum, all the way, all the way through. So I, uh, I, uh, as Coach Reimer, very, very blessed to be here. Um, you know, you're almost, you're almost wondering how in the world it even happened. Just stumbled into this situation, and you're here, and you're like, "Holy, this is, this is so awesome!" Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Pour in, pour in, pour in, because that's, you know, that's, that's the attitude we want. So um, that's, that's my thoughts. They're really hard to follow. Um, I think there's just a couple of things that stick out to me and, you know, I, it's nice to be at a place like Cumberland's and what I say to every recruit that sits in my office when I look at their families is, I absolutely struck gold when for some reason they found me qualified enough to be in the position that I'm in. I mean, I feel that way every day. and. You know, four years in, I still feel that way. Every day I feel lucky to be employed here. I feel blessed to be employed here. It's not that they owe me anything. I owe them, I owe this university, you know, way more than, than I could ever really put into words. And that was pre-pandemic. And, you know, post-pandemic, the only things that, or here, I guess we're not through it quite, but, you know, on the other side of it, I think th there's a couple of things that always stick out to me when it comes to our administration and it's, people first. We always put people first here, always. No matter what, it's not about coaches, it's not about administrators, it's not about professors, it's always about people. And I feel like in, in our world today, in our society today, that's one of the biggest things that's overlooked as a majority, is people. People matter, right? It doesn't matter what your title is, it doesn't matter how much money you make, it literally matters that you're human, you're a person and you matter. And I feel like everyone on this campus, whether you're the head softball coach or, you know, you're just a student that goes here that's trying to get a degree, it doesn't matter. People are first here. Um, and then I think the other thing that's really stuck out to me in, in the couple years that I've been here and has been so apparent, you know, because you can have good leadership when everything's going well. That's easy, right? That's what we tell our players all the time is how easy it is to, you know, be great and happy and positive when things are going well for you. But what happens when there's adversity? And the only thing I learned, or the most important thing that I've learned since March, is that our administration is prepared for anything. The good, the bad, the ugly, the challenges, the adversity. And it's the forward thinking. It's the, you know, plan, tackle, accomplish, you know, go through those things, but we always are going to find a way through it. It's not, oh my God, what do we do? It's, okay, how are we going to win this? How are we going to get to the other side of this? And I think that's one thing that, you know, we're fortunate as coaches is that I say our administration, Dr. Cockrum and Emily are, and Emily Coleman are, are very athletic minded, but it's just because they're minded like us coaches as we see, we see a problem, how do we fix it? Right? It's not we see a problem, we're defeated. They have that same mindset that a lot of us do um, as coaches, as competitors. And I think that's why our entire atmosphere, our one big team, our culture is huge. It's not just the athletic department anymore. It's our campus. 
right? And I think that's the coolest part, but I think it starts at the top. It starts at the very top. You know, Chris makes our job extremely easy, but he can't make our job that easy without the leadership above him that makes his job easy, right? So, you know, the pandemic, corona, all of those things, I mean, the communication here, you know, talking to some of the other coaches that we're communicating with, well, what's going on there? Well, what's going on there? It was always, I don't know. And that's like Coach Lefevre said, we always had a plan. And, you know, I mean, there was always, there was some unknowns, but as soon as it was known, it was communicated to us. And we always had a plan. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, there's not enough good word or good things I could say about our administration and the leadership that we're blessed to work for here, so. I would like to thank all of our coaches for joining us today. Chris Lefevre, Bailey Dillinger, Matt Reimer, also Tommy Chasanoff. And remind you guys to, you know, do your part. Wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance, all those things to help us get back on the field, on the court, in the pool, on the mat, wherever we participate here at University of Cumberland, be a part of that one big team. We'll see you next time right here on the UC Sports Network.